Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team, and I am here with Thomas Wertinger, and we are in Tokyo at the Tokyo Garden Tower, 30 floors up, actually, actually right here at the uh, corner of the building, um, for a Grawl VM session here. Um, actually, it's a, um, it's a workshop for Scala. So, Thomas, welcome. Thanks for having me here. Hi. It's really good to have you here. Um, we're going to discuss this workshop, which is happening right behind the camera here. There's about 40 engineers up actually, actually, actually up behind there. And But you're here in Tokyo because you're on a basically this grand tour of Asia. She's talking about Graal VM you know, for Oracle Labs. So let's start there. Let's start with your tour. Uh, is this the beginning of the tour, the middle, the end? And where have you been so far? Uh, so we're in the middle of the tour at the moment. Uh, I've already had a great time in Taiwan, uh, meeting with uh, local user groups, and also in Seoul, in South Korea, where we met as well, both customers and user groups. And now it's the third destination here in Tokyo. And I'm, I'm very excited to be here with the Scala community. And I've also met in Tokyo already the Ruby community that is very strong in Japan. And uh, it was really great also on Tuesday to, to meet them. Interesting. Yeah, actually. Um, and so last night we were at the Java Japan user group and you gave a session there. And uh, today we're here in, Nishish, in uh, Nishi Shinjuku um, for this you know, Scala session. So talk a little bit about you know, what's happening here. There's about, 40, there's about 40 engineers here and they're working on you know, a workshop. What's actually going on? Yeah, so they are doing a Graviam workshop here, and uh, it has three parts. Uh, that uh, One for each of the major value propositions of Graviam. Uh, the first one is showing the JIT compiler performance uh, when running Scala code on Graviam. Uh, and uh, the second part is showing the ahead-of-time compilation capabilities, where you can create small, self-contained executables from Scala code. And the third part of the workshop is going to show the polyglot capabilities of combining Scala with R. Okay, so this uh, is a multi-hour session here, right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, quite long. I'm, I'm impressed by the endurance of the audience, uh, also because you had the talk before, so we're already a few hours in. <laughs> So yeah, you gave the opening session, so now they're working, but you gave the opening session basically a review of where the project is at this point and to talk a little bit about the, um, you know, about the, um, so about the workshop. So let's, uh, let's now talk about where the project is at this point. When I first met you, I met you, I think it was in 2017, so, you know, a couple of years ago, I uh, met you with, you know, Eric Sedler at, at, at Java One or, you know, Code One. And that was the first time I heard of, of Graal VM, but I was very excited about it because, um, you know, obviously it came out of Oracle Labs, but it's an open source project. And since then, it's grown substantially. And I've tried to do a lot of interviews with, with you know, Graal VM engineers. Uh, and they're always very, very popular. Um, so you gave a session here earlier about, you know, where we are now with the project. So just give a quick summary of that. Yeah, I mean, since then, like uh, specifically, we have not had only our open source release of uh, the first uh, production ready release. We also had the product launch of Garmin Enterprise Edition as an Oracle product associated with the project. Uh, I think this has been a very important step for the project to also have an enterprise grade commercial offering around it. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, it has been going great. And uh, Specifically, the interest in the project has also increased from other companies and partners. Uh, this is why last uh, month we had a workshop, a community workshop in Zurich. Yeah, actually, you, I'm glad you brought that up because I saw um, a whole bunch of images you know, coming out of that uh, your workshop. And what I noticed, first of all, it was full. And second of all, you know, just reading the uh, tweets about it, there's a lot of developers, a lot of companies, like you mentioned. Um, so... Uh, you're taking contributions from the community is one thing in terms of individual developers out there, but when corporations get involved, you know, big corporations get involved, they certainly bring resources, right? And um, so, uh, how are you guys at Oracle, you, the Oracle engineers in the labs, interacting with these companies in terms of getting them involved in the project? Yeah, so we have a lot of uh, engagement on GitHub, where we are jointly working on issues, and we also receive uh, many pull requests from external parties. 
One step to further increase the interaction that we took uh, last month is to initiate our public Slack channel where third parties can uh, participate and we can create groups with some of uh, the engineers on the project uh, to make specific um, action groups. So, so this has been going very well and uh, yeah, in the community workshop we had uh, many, many participants and I think it was a lot of energy at the community workshop in Surrey. So you guys are using Slack to communicate with the community or is that just for a, a segment like with the companies? Uh, we are s using it also to interact with the broader community. Yes, it's a public Slack channel where you can post questions and uh, anybody is welcome to join. Another thing that um, actually I was talking to you about it, actually in the cab ride over here was, was new governance models. I'm particularly interested in large engineering projects how you get, actually how you're integrating code? How do you manage the integration of code with a diverse group of people? In this case, obviously, it's, it's you know distributed globally, um, involving not only individual developers but you know companies. In this case, um, talk about governance models for a moment. Yeah. So, so one of the things outcomes from the workshop is that we're gonna um, instantiate a. Gravium advisory board where there will be a representative from each company that wants to be involved in the Gravium project and where we will discuss the project's uh, communication structures and governance moving forward. So we, we are currently uh, collecting uh, in the, in participants for this uh, advisory board and uh, will in the very near future publish the set of uh, companies and representatives of the companies that joined that board. One of the feedback uh, we got from the community workshop in Zurich is that we need to improve uh, some of the public uh, roadmap and um, some of the public uh, discussions of um, changes to the project on GitHub. Uh, this is why we are starting to use now the GitHub projects feature where you will be able to see a little bit more structured what are the next steps on the project so other companies and third parties have uh, better visibility and can more easily join the process so we are i mean Kralium started originally as a very small research project at labs and then we had to constantly transform ourselves as we were growing within oracle labs from research to production and now with uh, many more external companies involved, we also have to transform ourselves now to uh, an even larger project where there is uh, more third parties that uh, want to participate and that have their own interests and, uh, and, and, and their own aims uh, how to develop the project further. And uh, so it's another transformation that we're undergoing right now. But it has been uh, very exciting and very happy about uh, the engaged uh, the participants uh, in the community workshop and also the um, the high number of companies and and um, representatives that signed up for that uh, Gravium advisory board. Very good. Um, it's one of the things that I noticed now that more and more people are familiar with Gravium. It's not actually new. And people are just hearing about it because it's reaching a certain level of you know residence out there. It's a very noisy world out there, right? So you got to have you know you know a certain level of activity. Um, but this is you guys have been working on this for about eight years. You said in your presentation. Yeah, it's uh, going on for eight years. Eight years ago, we were uh, starting it as a research project, and initially we were only known in a very small academic community. And only since about one and a half years, we really started to reach out also to the developer community at large with our first uh, release candidates. And uh, so it has been like a very great time since then, actually. It has been very, um, uh, very, um, uh, like, um, like the, the positive reception we got from the community uh, has been really great for us and very motivating for the team. It's, it's, it's great to, uh, to get this uh, positive feedback um, on, on, on the work and um, we, are, we are excited about like how, how we are currently uh, can grow the community also with more third parties and more third party companies uh, participating. 
Yeah, because I mean, it's I mean, all the elements are in place. I mean, you guys aren't just throwing code over the wall. I mean, so Oracle is placing real engineering resources behind it. You're forming a community advisory board, you know, with real, you know, obviously large corporations. Um, and there's a fair number of engineers that I keep on tripping over, you know, from labs who are working on this project, f f you know, full time. And those guys are distributed as well. Yeah, the engineering team of Gravem is very distributed, very international. Uh, we are um, like we have many different uh, teams because the project has uh, a lot of different features. We have like Ruby implementation, R implementation, uh, JavaScript implementation, but we also have done uh, more core compiler construction work going on. And so it's really a, a very diverse uh, set of uh, engineers, uh, both from their location, from their nationalities, but also from the areas they work on. Excellent, excellent. Well, Thomas, I won't keep you any longer because this is an active workshop here and these guys actually have questions, I'm sure. So thanks for coming by and we'll see you at an event in the future, I'm sure. This is Jim Grisanzio from Tokyo. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.